Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. He is dedicated to helping you move into your magnificence. And we all have magnificence within. Sometimes you need a little bit of help in finding that, the joy, the passion. Essentially, the full book title that he has is called Move Into Your Magnificent Magnificence, 101 Invitations. Uh, I messed that up, and I can't even do no, this again. To a, life, to a life of passion and passion joy. And joy. Thank you. Uh, and I, you know what? I, I'm being, I'm looking at your banner in the back, and that was part of it. It's like, all right, let me look over there, but don't look over there, Steve. Don't even do that. <laughs> he is an amazing life coach, obviously an author, a mentor, a speaker. Guy has done it all. He is Dr. Barry Fleet, and he's back with us. Hey, Barry, how are you? I'm doing well. How about yourself, Steve? I like to say I'm magnificent, but maybe not today. But uh, <laughs> yeah, it's all, all good. And we've never talked about this book, which is magnificent, in that it's got the keys, the secret to changing our lives. And many of us, who's going to tell you that they don't want to have passion and joy in their life? But sometimes we don't know how to get there. And life gets in the way. Uh, 101 invitations in your book. We're going to get to some of those. Uh, when we say invitations, what do we mean by that? So um, my book, there, there are 101 uh, vignettes. Um, I tell a story. And then at the end of the story, there's an invitation to action. And, and with the invitation to action, my tagline is, and the extent to which you accept my invitation is the extent to which you'll be able to say, I feel good about being me. Gotcha. Okay. So, so um, one example that just comes into mind, um, this is last, last year, um, uh, my grandchildren started school. And so at the end of the first day of school, I called and asked them how, how the day had gone. And my, my granddaughter was saying, well, that they had a, a, an activity at the beginning. Um, it was a scavenger hunt and you were supposed to go find people. And one of the things on the list to find was um, two people that had two brothers. And so she went around and she found somebody that had two brothers and she checked that off her list and she went on to other things on the scavenger hunt. And, uh, and, and then she went on to say, I said, so how was that? She said, it was fun, except I made a mistake. I was supposed to find two people with two brothers. And I just found one person with two brothers. And my, my response was, well, Gwen, if that's the worst thing that happened to you, you had a good day. And she said, there was no worst thing that happened. <laughs> and and I said, I said, what do you what do you mean? She said, no. She said, it really was a good day. And, wow. and, and I think about, yeah. And and she was, I mean, I would have been embarrassed by that because because I'm care about how people think about me and, and I don't want to make mistakes. I have this need to be perfect. Sure. Uh, it's the illusion that a lot of us chase. Um, and a lot of us, when, when something happens to us that isn't according to our script, our, our go-to line is, it's all good. It's all good. And, and what I know about a lot of folks who say that is, that's a screen that, that, that on an emotional level, it doesn't feel good. But it's 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 what we cover up to make everything look okay. And what struck me about my granddaughter is that was genuinely how she felt. It wasn't a big deal. She had a good time. She made a mistake. And she went on and had a good day. Um, so um, I, I'm, I'm analyzing what you're saying. And I agree with you. And I'm having I'm having some thoughts here. So when somebody says all good, do you think that they're it doesn't mean that there's something bad, but they're willing to accept what is going on? Um, I think that I think there's truth to that. Um that, that there is so so there are lots of different levels to this. Um and and I do think. For a lot of us, when we say that, that yes, on the surface level, that happened. I don't like it, but it's okay. I'm going to move on. Um, but I also think that at a gut level, it can eat at us. I agree. Um, I'm going to say it isn't. It's okay. 
in that I'd rather have somebody say that, and I say it myself, than to say, no problem or no worries, because right away you're starting with a negative. No. So yes. good is positive. I'd rather go with that than to go Absolutely. with some of the other. And they're Absolutely. all kind of, they're all kind of the same anyway. Um well, but you but you make a really valid point, and that is embracing what is as opposed to trying to push away what isn't. Right, exactly. So all good is it's a statement that it's okay, whereby no worries, you know, you, you, I feel it, what you're saying there, you're pushing it away. And you said something before, and I try never to say it ever. Um, and what's the worst that could happen? If you, <laughs> if you analyze subconsciously how the mind works, you're asking for the worst to happen because your subconscious is hearing worse to happen. Okay. Let me do what I can, or, you know, let, let me make him, you know, Steve or Barry, let me work on that because that's what they're asking for. It doesn't know the difference between good and bad. It's hearing an instruction. Right. And, and I don't, I don't I raise the question. What is the worst thing that could happen? My comment to Gwen was if that was the worst thing that happened, Sure, sure. I, I, it just reminded me of never to use that phrase. <laughs> that, absolutely, that absolutely. Um, you know, it's kind of like that classic line here, hold my beer, you know. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> People doing crazy <laughs> stuff. Um, but but what, I, what I am so passionate about is knowing that we all have this inner magnificence. And it get, you said it well, it gets covered up by life. Um, and, and one of the things that some of us lose is a sense of resilience. When we hit a bump in the road, how do we handle it? Can we, can we say it's all good and keep moving forward? Um, what would it take for us to say it's all good and keep moving forward? Um, you know, some, I don't know anybody um, that, that's more than two years old that hasn't had something bad happen to them. Um, we get divorced, um, we lose a job, we lose our health, um, somebody close to us dies, Sure. Uh, things happen. What are the reasons? I'm convinced that we have resources within us to deal with life, life the hard stuff. Um, but some of us have lost touch with that. And we allow life circumstances to dictate the rest of our life. Um, and, and what I'm passionate about is, yes, there's some bad stuff that has happened. How can you go forward and embrace what is good? Because there is something good. And, and we've talked before about this. Sometimes you have to look really hard or sometimes it just has to be this intellectual thing of. I know there is something good, but I sure don't see it right now, but I'm going to be open to it because I know it's going to it's going to show up somehow. I agree. <laughs> and I agree. And I agree. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And, and I was the other person and you talk about perfectionism. That was me. I did. I, at age 17, there's a newspaper clipping on the wall in the other room where I had a, I drew cartoons and I had a display at the local library. And there's a quote from me that says I'm a perfectionist and <laughs> I, I not even kidding. And I carried yeah. that for, for decades until I realized that you can't do that. It's impossible to be perfect. Do the best you can. And and that's, that's okay. And that's, right. that's kind of what our parents always said to us. Just do the best you can. That's okay. As long as you are doing the best you can with what you have, you know, sometimes right. we don't have everything we need to do the best. So we're doing the best we can with what we have, but yeah, it, it is that realization where you need to something negative happens or you're not seeing positivity, know that it's out there or find something to grip onto. It's almost like swimming. You're in an ocean. There's a lot of negativity. Why? I see it over there. I'm going to swim over there. It's going to take me a little while to get there, but I do see an Island, uh, you know, right over there. I'm going to swim to it. Eventually I'll get there. There's sharks swimming around me right now, but I know it's out there. If you have, yeah. I think if you have that, that kind of moves you along in the path of life. Yes. Um, your comment of do your best reminds me of another um, vignette in the book. Um, a couple of years ago, um, I was teaching and um, had assigned a, a 
a massive term paper that was due at the end of the semester. And um, one of the students asked me when, when I would get the grades back. And I said, well, I will certainly have it to you, the grade, when you show up for the final exam. I'll, I'll have a paper in the grade there. And, and her comment was, well, if I don't know what my grade is on the term paper, how will I know how hard to study for the final exam? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like a negotiation. And, and I said, do your best. But, but I think there are a lot of us that are looking for what do we need to do to get by? Yes. And, and that, that, that might serve us well in the moment, but it doesn't serve us well in terms of our relationship with ourselves and the world around us. Um, oh. and, and so, and so one of the invitations is, um, are you doing your best and do your best and let it go? It was, it was the best you could do. Um, we had a, uh, a gym party last night. Our, our trainer um, had a birthday party and, and as part of it, we were randomly assigned to um, teams and each member of the team would um, would run a half a mile. Um, it's going to sound a little bit disgusting. Um, eat a hot dog and, and drink a stubby beer or a, a, a mini carbonated drink. And then after we had swallowed all that, the next team member would run their half mile leg. Um, and I am, I, I, realized last night I'm not the slowest guy at the gym, but I'm <laughs> I'm in the running, so to speak. Um, and, and the first wave that went out, it didn't take a quarter of a mile for me to be dead last. And there's a time in my life when, or there's a time in my life when I wouldn't even been willing to participate mm. because I knew that about myself. And then there would this time in my life when I would um, drop out and just say, I can't do this. Um, but but through working with my own stuff, um, I said, you know what? This is just for fun, Barry. And it's not about comparing yourself to these people that are in their 20s, 30s, and 40s. Yep. You're 76 years old. Do your best and have fun. The stuff you do at 76 is amazing. <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> look at that and say, wow. Yeah. Um, it is it, but the, my point is, and, and and what I am passionate about helping people connect with is, what are you doing for fun? How can you how can you find joy in what you're doing, and how do you feel good about yourself in doing it? And and as I said, what I know is, when I'm looking for what's the least I can do to get by, I might get by, and I might feel good about getting by, but I don't feel good about being me. It erodes my sense of integrity, uh, my sense of authenticity. And, and that's what I'm all about, is helping people have a, a positive mindset, helping people recognize that no matter what the circumstances, I still have power and connecting with the power I have. Um, Viktor Frankl uh, was um, in the concentration camp and he went through some horrible things. He watched his family um, some of them were, were slaughtered by the Germans. Some of them died. Um, but he got, he got curious uh, because some people survived and others who were in the identical circumstances, the same situation, didn't. And, and he was curious when, when he got out to find the people that had survived and ask them, what is it that allowed you to survive when other people didn't? And it was all about they had a reason. They wanted to be sure and live to tell the story of what happened in the concentration camps. Mm -hmm. They didn't want that story to die in the concentration camps. And, and so that's another part of the magnificence is when we know why we're alive, when we have a reason, um, then we get connected with our power. Love that story. And it just reminded me of something that just happened where I live, where there's a guy who's 65, went swimming in the ocean. This is two, a day ago, a day ago, five o'clock in the morning. He goes out, he's swimming. Again, 65, current pulled him out. Now he's in the middle of nowhere. And he treaded or tread water for over five hours. Mm. 
And yes, the water is warmer this time of the year, but you know, warm is you know, in this area <laughs> off the coast of Long Island, New York. Uh, yeah. Call it 76, 78 degrees. Yeah. 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 And they asked him, well, how did you, how did you do it? Why, why, you know, how were you able to, he said it was a challenge. And what saved him was he thought for a second, took off his shirt and found a fishing pole floating around, took the fishing pole, tied the shirt to it and was using that as a flag. And eventually a boat saw him. And the two guys on the boat said, there's no boats from miles around. There's nobody would have ever seen him. They happen to go by and see him. But, you know, to your point, there was a story to be told or there was something, a goal to be met. And his his goal was the challenge. I'm going to try and do this. I'm going to see if I can pull it off. He came back. Uh, the Coast Guard got him. Uh, yes, hypothermia. Uh, he got treated and he was, he's perfectly fine. But, you know, again, 65 and he and he pulled that off. But that's that's another part of what we all have in us, and that's our creativity. Yes. And and who would think about a fishing pole in my shirt and how that's going to help me survive? But but the creative mind and that inner magnificence was able to put those things together and say, I can I can use this hmm. to survive. Yeah. And and did something that I mean, I've never seen anybody tie a shirt to a fishing pole and use it for anything. And <laughs> right place, right time. He had the, the 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 frame of mind to see the pole floating by. He could have been just like, I don't know, how am I going to do this? No, he's like, I'm looking. What can I? Oh, what's that? Let me get that <laughs> and take my shirt off and tie it to it and use it as a, a, a safety signal. And, and that's also um, evidence of we have an incredible innate wisdom within us. Yeah. Yeah. If we can push our fears aside and be centered enough to let it emerge, um, and and had this guy just been in a state of panic, he he wouldn't have noticed it, or he wouldn't have made a connection. Exactly. But but he saw his situation as dire as it was, as a challenge, rather than as a fate. Yes. And exactly what you said. He had the mindset to focus. And how do you do that? We forget about forget about age. You could have been 22. And now you're three hours into treading water and you're still thinking, what's out right. there? What can I do? I got some time left. Something's gonna come up. Something's gonna there's gonna be something. Um, you know, fortunately it was a, a sunny day, uh, you know, if the weather had been bad, very windy, rainy, whatever, yeah. different, different situation. So he looked out in that regard, but yeah, <laughs> we had everything we need. I've said this before, uh, everything we need is within us. It's there. Yeah, absolutely. It is. Um, and it's, it's been for most of it, it's been covered up by all kinds of life experiences, Yeah, but, but it's there. Um, and, and that's my, my book is, um, I, I, I committed the cardinal sin in writing the book. They always say, um, who, who is this book for? Um, and in my mind, I'm writing it for everybody. Well, everybody turns out to be nobody in particular. Um, but there's a way in which it, it is for, for everybody. Um, but it's for, it's for people that are interested in learning more about themselves. It's for students and young adults who are starting out in life and wanting to, to build a foundation for themselves. It's about people on a spiritual path who are seeking um, to connect with that, um, sure. that spiritual value. It's about um, individuals facing challenges. I have a, have a friend who within, I think it was 13 months, um, lost his son to um, an overdose. Um, his um, partner in life was um, killed in an uh, automobile accident by a drunk driver, um, and he had to move out of his home. Um, loss after loss after loss. Um, and, and not all of us get hit that hard, but, but life can be really hard sometimes. And what do we have to hang on to? Um, and we... we we have to look within. And the good news is that within us are the answers. 
one of the other things I'm, I'm really passionate about is, and I mentioned the, the student who, who asked the question, so how will I know how hard to study? I want people to think, what's my legacy? What, what's the reputation that I'm building? Am I intentional about building a reputation? Um, or is it, is it going to be something that, that just happens without me realizing it? Um, but I, um, uh, the, the men's group that I, that I coordinate, um, our, we have a, an invitation every week. And last week, the invitation was to be mindful of the people that you had some sort of connection with and you felt better about yourself after, for having been in their presence. I mean, there's some people we feel better because they, they're not in our presence anymore. This is true. <laughs> this is feeling better because we have been in their presence. It's an interesting thought. Who are those people? Are they yeah. still around? Yes, they are. Yes, they are. And and there, there are two qualities that they have. One is they have a sense of curiosity. They, they're interested in us. They ask something about us. Um, or, and they encourage us. But, mm. but, but when I look at it, I mean, you, you can think for yourself about the people that, that you've been in touch with randomly or intentionally. And what is it about those people that consistently allow you to feel better because you got to spend two minutes, five minutes, an hour a day with them? Yeah. yeah. It makes, I'm, I'm thinking about it now. Like, you know, you may not have seen them in a while, whoever the people we are talking about are in our lives, but it does make you think who they are. Uh, it's so, so I have quick parting thoughts here. The questions, the curious questions, so important. And I, I know a guy, friends with him, hang with him every once in a while. Yeah, sometimes once a week, we all get together. You know, it's like three of us, sometimes four guys. He is, he can be cranky. But I'll tell you this, he asks the best questions and he is the most connected person I know. Everybody knows this guy and he'll just randomly throw a question out. It's like, oh, I didn't even, you know, I didn't think of that. And he's asking me that question, even as a friend. Yeah. Um, and regarding books, I find it challenging to, to get into a book and I'm trying to change that. And there was a um, study that just came out that says if you spend 36 minutes or 29 pages with a book, you're going to be absorbed and you're going to hmm. be in it and you'll finish that. Literally came out today. So if you think about that, you know, if you like pick up a book and you're like 23 minutes in, like, yeah, all right, let me on to something else. Try and hold on for about 36 minutes and just, you know, still another page, another page, keep going. And then phew, you get hooked. So the thing about my book is it will only take you three or four minutes to read one of the one of the vignettes and the invitations. Sure. And this is not a book that you necessarily start at the beginning and and go through, you know, chronological order. Gotcha. Uh, you can you can pick it up and just flip it open anywhere and spend two or three minutes and come away with an invitation to do or think something different. It's almost like it's 101 mini books. Absolutely. It is. Yeah. It is. Wow. It's a collection. And we find your, your book on your website. It's on my website, www.drbarryfleet.com. You can go there. You can um, see the connection to my book. There's a, there's a link there. You can watch my TEDx talk. You can uh, watch an interview that I did with Jack Canfield, who uh, did the Chicken Soup for the Soul series. Sure. Sure. Um, your TED talk. I have yet to, we mentioned it a few times before. I've yet to see it. it it's, it's, I'm later today. I'm going to check it out. What's the topic of your TED talk? It's your inner magnificence. Fantastic. Uh, Barry, always great having you on here and uh, love the concept of the book and the, and the stories and the thought that went into it. And uh, yeah, it's all in us. You just gotta, you need to find it. You need to move yes. into it. Yes. So real quickly, the, 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 TEDx talk is a, I use a geode as a as a as a visual, and on the outside the geode looks like a, it's an ordinary rock, but if you take time and look inside, there's some beautiful stuff inside. 
with the crystals. Wow. So I, I, I totally got that visual when you break it open. Sometimes on the outside, it's dirty. It's kind of uh, abrasive on the outside. Nothing, nothing special so much. The Very unattractive. Yeah. Yeah. Just another rock. But when you find what's inside, magnificent. And that's true for all of us. Thank you for being here, Barry. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks, Steve. Have a great day. Thank you. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, online radio box, and simple radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcast on the go and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house. And there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit HFOTUSA.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's. It's going to be okay.